Over this last weekend, we got the chance to vend the Show Me Your Reptile and Exotic show in Loveland, Colorado. Now, this was a pretty good show. So far, Show Me Your Reptiles hasn't had the best turnout as far as Colorado shows go, but this one was pretty nice. Just setting up for it, we got to see a bunch of really cool vendors, store owners, and breeders from across the state, as well as even a couple from out of state as well. In Colorado, they usually have a lot of just kind of ball pythons and crested geckos, and that's about it. But there was a really nice variety of different species represented, a ton of different enclosures, as well as a bunch of photography and art and really cool crafts that were made by a bunch of very talented individuals, a lot of them being local. There was a bunch of different, uh, a bunch of different live plants, some really cool taxidermy and really cool, just kind of macabre interesting things, as well as some really cute crochet axolotls and things of that nature. It was a really, really nice turnout, and it also gave us a chance to really start to do into what we like to do, as well as, you know, network with a bunch of other different really cool local breeders and start to, you know, raise each other up. But it gave us an opportunity to have our very first presentations as far as educational programs go at a reptile event. This way it's not just at our own table, which at this point in the year, we honestly didn't have a whole lot of snakes to vend in general, but it gave us an opportunity to actually share with what ended up to be several thousand people throughout the weekend, a chance to see some amazing animals and an ability to share some really cool information about them as well as some other people too. So essentially how all this happened was I approached the people who run Show Me Reptile and Exotic Show because I've been at a few events for them now, both in Colorado and out of state, if they would at all be interested in someone doing educational programs and presentations at their Loveland show because that was hopefully going to be their biggest show in Colorado. And they said, absolutely, we love to do that at our larger shows. You know, it's just we don't have a whole lot of staff to do it. And it'd be something really cool if that's something that you'd want to do. And I said, absolutely. And essentially, they said, the ball is in your court. You put this together. You got this. We will help you in all the ways that we can. We'll promote you. And we'll make sure that it'll go well for you. And that's exactly what happened. So very quickly, uh, I got together with a couple other vendors there. Um, reached out to some friends of mine. And my partner very quickly put together an amazing a little ad for us, a little flyer that we were able to promote to them really quickly. And we were able to promote that both with Show Me Your Reptile Expo, as well as a bunch of other local uh, reptile breeders and hobbyists. And so because of that, we were able to do an amazing little show. So the very first thing I did was reach out to my good friends who own quite a few interesting oddball animals that live in northern Colorado, closer to where the event was going. And that included some really cool snakes, like this cave-dwelling rat snake or the Ridley Eye rat snake, eastern indigos, this amazing blue beauty snake, which was huge, egg-eating snakes, legless lizards, a bunch of really cool different species, northern and southern white-lit pythons, as well as it gave me a chance to show some other people some other oddball ones that I even had, although not quite nearly as many uh, as they had, including uh, my Angolan python and my rhino rat snake and the L.A. pine snake, as well as they even were able to bring one of my new favorite species, uh, the yellow red rat snake or the Mexican night rat snake. It goes by a bunch of different names. And they even let me play with a nice black-headed python because mine certainly is not very nice. But it was a really great time. And in addition to that, I also reached out to Colorado Gators that we have visited a number of times. And recently, uh, with our move, we're much closer to them. And they actually offered to loan us one of their dwarf caiman because we can't carry alligators uh, around the state of Colorado legally. So he offered uh, one of the caiman for me to go and present with. And so that's exactly what we did. And we had a nice little really cool presentation involving ball python genetics rare and unusual snakes, including this Amazon puffing snake, which was the very first time I had even seen one in person, which was really cool. Um, so the rare and unusual snakes, 
uh, from around the world. So, you know, like the LA pine snake, the Louisiana pine snake, the rarest snake in North America, the Eastern indigos, as well as the oddball ones, like the puffing snake, like the yellowtail crebo, uh, like the yellow red rat snake, like I talked about, and all those other really cool oddball snakes. And in addition to that, I also did my best to reach out to other local people and organizations that went into other things other than just kind of regular breeding who worked with very either niche species or very interesting things. And that's exactly what we did as well to kind of sparse it out in between just me talking to everybody all the time. Although with good helps from our friend, uh, from our friends who did bring some animals for allowed us to showcase them. So this is the kind of like the guru, if you will, of the soil scientist world. This is Dr. Elaine Ingham. She's one of, uh, I would say the more predominant people of bringing forth using microbial life uh, to kind of take your living soil to the next level. So when we were farming cannabis, we would make sure that we were trying to get the pinks and the blues out of that flower material. That would come down from the soil food web. So we're just using that same knowledge to build our uh, soil substrate. This is the progression that you would normally see. You'll notice this in your yard when you start to see dandelions on the far end. That's just mother nature trying to build what's known as the soil food web. To make that happen, those dandelions need to have roots, so that's why those are really hard to get uh, rid of. And as su succession uh, goes down the line, this is what we're trying to replicate when we're building uh, isopod enclosures, is what's known as the old growth forest. Now normally that would take probably decades to hundreds of years to achieve, so we're trying to achieve that at a rapid pace using what's known as my uh, ind indigenous microorganisms. This is mycelium that we're trying to replicate. This is found in nature. This is my mycelium. Uh, this is about maybe seven, six, seven days ago. Again, the focus is really on that lion head rabbit manure. That's kind of like the catalyst to really build up those fungal aspects. The more bacteria and the more fungal that we have, the easier it is going to be able for you as an isopod farmer to breed high end cubaris, the famous one being the, the rubber ducky isopod. They were found in the caves of Thailand in 2017. So the more fungal aspects and a little bit of humidity, the quicker they seem to breed. If you just have them on like kind of a, a plain uh, dry substrate, I have found that sometimes people are unsuccessful with that or it can take up to a year for those to actually start to take off. So the microbial aspect is really the, my key to success when I'm breeding up high-end Cubaris isopod. All right, so really what we're getting at to is how to build these bioactive systems. I have a YouTube show on Wednesdays and Thursdays that go over this kind of stuff and it has exploded in popularity. More and more people want to be able to set up their uh, terrariums and herbariums without really having to work too hard uh, to maintain those systems. That's what a bioactive system uh, is supposed to represent. Sweet. Then, yeah, going about. So some of the trips that we do um, this year, we're going to go to the Audubon Nature Center out of uh, Chatfield. Um, and the goal is to try and find as many herbs and, and like species as possible. So like we can find red-sided garter snakes, milk snakes, bull snakes, prairie rattlesnakes, um, all kinds of snakes. Um, and then another big trip that we do, um, or so for Audubon, we're partnering with CPW, uh, Denver Water, um, and uh, the Chatfield State Park to just kind of survey the property and tell them what they have on their property. And uh, we do it for free, um, but it's a great way to get people involved and find snakes. One of our main target species at this survey that we're going to do is the northern leopard frog. Uh, the northern leopard frog is a tier one species of greatest conservation need in Colorado. So they're not threatened or endangered yet, but they're about to be there. They're still trying to figure it out. Bullfrogs are the main problem for them. Not only do they eat the same stuff that they eat and take up the same habitat, but they eat our leopard frogs, which you know is a no good all around. And so these northern leopard frogs, wherever we can find them, it's a really huge deal for CPW because they want to conserve those habitats because those are like the last little pieces of wetland habitat that we have that have been untouched by these super big invasive species. I absolutely love working with the Show Me Reptile guys. They're great. I love how straightforward and honest they are. And it's really fun working with them. And so after this experience and being able to do those presentations really more professionally than we have before, um, in a situation, in a setting at a real reptile expo uh, versus more of like the kind of traditional thing that we normally see, it gave me an opportunity to talk to some other people 
um, some of the presenters there as well as other people that were very interested in them um, about what we can do a little bit better moving forward. Not that I thought it went poorly at all. I thought it went great. It was really fun. Had a great time all weekend long. Um, I apologize to anybody at the show if they wanted to sit and talk a little bit longer. I know most of the time was actually spent essentially setting up and coordinating and working with the other presenters in the show to make sure that that all went off without a hitch. Uh, went off without a hitch. That sounds better. But we have a lot of ideas in store to make it a little bit better, to make it a little bit more, I don't really like the term professional, but a little bit more kind of set up and standard to where we can maybe do like live streams and have a little bit more of kind of a formal area for these presentations at other Show Me Reptile venues. Um, we have another, there's another one coming up in Pueblo. I know there's a lot of scheduling conflicts for a lot of the vendors here in Colorado, so I don't know how big that's gonna go. So you may or may not see us there. Um, if not, I really look forward to uh, doing future things, working with more people, hopefully being able to provide really an outlet for education as well as an ability for people to come out and acquire new reptiles, but to learn about a whole bunch of other ones in the future as well. It was really great. I apologize for a little bit of the sound quality as well as one more thing. I know that a lot of my attention so far has been to actually go with a lot of the personal interactions and making sure all that's on God. Um, but I haven't been terribly cognizant of actual filming. And so that is something I'm going to make a marked note of. And hopefully the filmography and cinematography will get better in future videos, especially when it comes to doing these like live presentations and talking about that as well as in shows too. Almost all of my time has been dedicated to uh, working on actually just learning and talking to people. It hasn't been great for videos and I want you guys to all enjoy the videos more. So that is something I'm gonna be more cognizant of in the future and you can hopefully look forward to some amazing content coming from me as well as learning about some really cool stuff. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, want to know anything more about any of the other presenters that we highlighted today, I'm going to put links to their Facebooks and other social media stuff at the bottom of this video, like always, just like USARC and everything else like that. Hope everyone's having a great day, and we will check you next time.